Here in Atlanta, we do a community initiative where we talk to kids about finding a legal hustle and also networking. Can we get your definition of the words hustle and network? Well, hustle means grinding, means get up every day and trying to make something happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you, could, you could be working a regular job and hustling or whatever because, because sometimes you got to hustle to work. Moving fast, trying to get it done, not procrastinating, not moving slow, taking the initiative, not waiting for somebody to ask you. You know what I'm saying? Getting out there, get ahead of the curve. And, um, networking. and networking is working with other people, regardless if you own it or not. Like, 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 like however you can get in. Like, sometimes you might be an artist, but you can write a hook for a song. If you can get in as a writer, get in as a writer. You know what I'm saying? However you can get in, that's networking. That's like, like spreading yourself out, but not thin, but, spread, but, but, but getting your hand in a little bit of everything. There it is, Rigo Wade, Organized Noise. Thank you so much. Well, um, Brian Reed and Pebbles were, um, of course, what happened was Bobby Brown. Let's keep it real. Bobby Brown moved to Atlanta, and Bobby Brown was the man. Especially if you were dark skinned, but you want to be Bobby Brown. I was Bobby Brown. I was dancing to our Bobby. Like, yo, so I <laughs> Bobby was seen in the clubs. And um, Derek Divine Stevens, Stevens, who I was talking about, saw Divine and challenged him in the club and became a star. You two became a star overnight. Oh, man, I heard Divine walked up to um, Heart and Soul, Bobby Brown dancers, and, and said something to Bobby Brown. Next thing you know, L.A. Reed and Babyface and Pebbles and Daryl Simmons. They had moved here chasing Bobby because they supposed to be doing Bobby next album. Mm. So they came here, and while they was here, they signed the guy they heard about that challenged um, Bobby. And, while, and then they realized, like, damn, he's really just a dancer. Like, <laughs> we got to get some real artists. Mm -hmm. And that's where um, the Pebble started looking for TLC. Pebble started looking for TLC. Um, Brian Reed found Usher. Dallas Austin was already popular because he did ABC for BBD. Jermaine was trying to scramble up and get crisscross together. These things were starting to happen at this point. But that crisscross didn't come out in 1991. TLC didn't come out in 91. But at this time, the city was buzzing. You hearing about showcases every two months, like, like this person can get on. So it was almost like we had three or four chances. We showcased as a singing group. Pebbles told us like, y'all dope, but not really sure. But, but, but we got that far. We was in her office. And she, and she said that we were all talented. She was like, I'm just not sure if this group is going to work right now. You know what I'm saying? But all you guys are dope. So in a nice way, she said, don't give up. Mm. You know I'm saying, you made it this far, don't give up. Figure it out. So that's when we started focusing a little more on, like, what do we do really, really good? That's, I mean, let's that's not, that's not get caught up in our ego about a singing group. I know I can't sing. It was a look. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to let that go. I'm cool. I'm cool. I ain't got to do that no more. I'm out of the group. <laughs> I'm out of the group. Let's get somebody else. <laughs> but, but with that mentality, though, you couldn't help but win because you was being selfless. Right. So when the opportunity came, when, um, when um, well, like I said, when Pebbles initially kind of found, put, was put, looking for the group TLC, we had something to do with putting TLC together anyway from, a, from another friend of ours, Ian Burke. He was putting together female BBD, like ABC, like so, because we was a part of these processes, it gave us more and more confidence to believe that we can do this. We want I me mean, like we we know the people. We just gotta find something that we're ahead of the curve on, that we kinda had. So we kinda said, you know what? We start looking for um because we had this rap group PA that we was from, that we had worked with. Well actually you you should tell about Reese and, and Mello. They were separated at first. Yeah. Like we we were messing with Mello. Mellow 66 Mellow and KP, you know, KP uh, Kawan Prather was the DJ for 66 Mellow. Rico at the turn was managing um, 66 Mellow. And uh, they were a rap group, you know what I mean? And then homie Reese was in another group where he had his own thing. And at this time when Pebbles uh, and LA and them came to town and they had the showcases, they then heard uh, PA. PA. They heard Reese, they heard his voice. You know what I mean? And he, but they became a group, and that was our first in way into the face and all paid of that. On but it wasn't really the face; it was more savvy. It was actually savvy records. It was uh, actually with Pebbles. She actually believed in us as a uh, production team, I guess. Yeah, she loved our music and stuff. She loved the music, right? Yeah, and she believed in us, and she also knew that um, we knew something. We had something to do with TLC, and she appreciated that. So by being around her, one thing about Pebbles and why her record company was called Savvy. She was classy. So even if it wasn't the biggest record company, she was giving you the ins and outs of how to, be, how, to, how to fit in with the greatness. You just had to make some records that was as big as them. But she was going to have you properly groomed and, 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 
and knowing how to talk and how to shut up around the right kind of people and how to and how not to be how to do your best and how to know that you just you belong in this business or whatever so by her being that way the the, the more time we put in with her she eventually kind of forced la reed to pay attention to us like, like she would be like you don't know what you're missing. These guys are really dope. Just give them an opportunity. Like, almost like, let them remix a TLC song. And the first song we remixed was TLC, What About Your Friends? And we put Outkast on it before they were Outkast. Right. Before, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, and and just, just to keep them inspired. Mm -hmm. Yo, this is going to work, huh? But it, that didn't happen for us. It, it might have played a little bit, but the remix didn't get played that much. But it, but it was an opportunity. We saw that we finally got some out or whatever. And we was like, we're going to keep, we're going to stick with it. We, we, and, um, Mercury, a few other record labels came to town, and, um, and like I said, we did showcases. We did showcases for LA, like when, um, because um, cause they, they um, the Face Records struggled for a second at the beginning, and so they did the Boomerang soundtrack. A lot of the albums they was putting out before that didn't work, so they were actually like struggling to where they were actually about to you know, fold up the tent and, right. and call it quits, and they had to go in and do the Boomerang soundtrack, and that really turned out good for them. When the Boomerang turned out good, that kind of got them refocused again, and he kind of took his hands off of trying to control every group, but just wanted to empower producers. And that's where he believed in us. It was like, whatever y'all want to do. Like, like you know what I'm saying? We, I saw what y'all just did with PA with my wife. Come on over here with me. And break, whatever y'all want to do. Because he's a pop guy, right? Pop guy, totally. Yeah. yeah. So they got 100 hit records on LaFace Records. We used to go to LaFace Records, to the record company. You, when you walk from the time you walk in the door, you will see number one records. Whitney Houston, The Deal, whoever it was. And it was so inspiring. Like, God, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is who you want to be around. If you don't nobody know what a hit is, these people know what a hit is. Tall boy, man.